So national stories now. The Kaduna State Pilgrims Welfare Agency on Tuesday launched a reviewed curriculum and guide for the pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia. The reviewed guide was published in 2015, while the curriculum meant for training pilgrims was published in 2019 in Hausa, but were now all reviewed in English language. The review carried out by a constituted 12-man committee by the agency comprised clerics and officials of the Nigerian Immigration Service, NIS, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, and the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, among others. Speaking at a preview and launch of the guide and curriculum, the executive secretary of the agency, Yusuf Arigasiyu, said the guide was aimed at correcting previous mistakes and ensuring clarity in Hajj performance. He also said that the reviewed curriculum was to ensure harmony in Hajj while standing on an ambiguous school of thought and strict prophetic ideals. Arigasiyu said the former Pilgrim's Training and Enlightenment Manual and the Pilgrim's Guide had been in use for over two decades. He noted that the agency would reproduce copies of the work for distribution to prospective pilgrims and pilgrim trainers. The River State Police Command on Tuesday said its operatives arrested a 17-year-old boy, Nobu Uzuchi, and Chigozie Obuna, 29, for allegedly working for a baby factory. Also arrested were two female suspects, Fever Bright, 30, and Peace Alikoi, 40, and the alleged leader of the syndicate. The four suspects reportedly operated in Obio, Akpo, and the Kore local government areas of the state. Also, the police said 10 pregnant girls were rescued. The police spokesperson, Grace Iringe Koko, in a statement in Port Harcourt on Tuesday, said the feet allowed a tip off, said the feet followed a tip off which the command acted on. The police said Uzuchi and Obona were hired by the syndicate to have marathon sex with the girls and impregnate them. Ahead of the February 25 presidential election, the All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council is planning an alliance with smaller parties in a bid to boost the chances of its presidential candidate, Ashwaju Bola Tinobu. Sources said that the PCC and the party had been making overtures to the parties to adopt Tinobu as their standard bearer. Findings indicated that the APC governors and Tinobu met on Monday night following fears expressed by some members on the need to address in a decrease in the party's presidential campaign. It was learned that APC Presidential Campaign Council, comprising governors and the candidate, was of the view that the alliance with other parties would assist the party in getting the highest number of votes and the required national spread in the presidential poll. Coordinator of the Oyo State Chapter of the Bola Met Tinubu and Kashim Shetima Campaign Organization, Florence Ajimobi, is calling on religious leaders to inculcate in their followers the need for tolerance, which according to her, is a necessary panacea for national development. Florence Ajimobi, wife of the late governor of Oyo State, gave this advice at an interreligious consultative meeting in Ibado, where she solicited support for candidates of the All Progressives Congress. The issue of same faith ticket has been used to campaign against the APC. The coordinator for Bola Tinubu campaign organization says people should look beyond religion, adding that the APC candidate possesses the capacity to transform the country. Because somebody is a Muslim, I'm not going to vote for him or because we have a Muslim Muslim. What does it pay us when if we have a Christian that has no fear of God, that has no compassion, no empathy? Tinubu is a God-fearing man. He has the love of people at heart. He's a builder of men. He's an astute politician. He's a giver. And I'm sure he'll be the best president Nigeria has ever had. Somebody who has proven himself. You all are standing here today. Are you going to tell me you don't know his achievements? And who is he contesting against? People who are, don't, cannot even show any achievements, who have also held positions of authority in this country, and what do they have to show for it? So what are we talking about? Should we even be having these discussions? It's very clear. For us to be effective in politics, we need to be involved. We need to be involved. We know that that's what we have been preaching all along in New York State. And we will get involved, and we will be effective there will be effective. Because if you look at the book of Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 9, and the second, those that are ruling us are regarded as ministers of God. So why the real ministers of God are here? We 
that we are here today, we are Muslims of all Oyo states, all the sites of Muslim women in Oyo state. We are here today. When she invited us, she come and tell us, she come and convince us that Bola Ahmed Ashwadi is the right man that we should vote for. And Ali Hamdi, like she'll deliver. She gave us enough reason. A high court sitting in Yola, the Adama state capital, has sacked Elisha Abu as a senatorial candidate for Adama North in the forthcoming general election. It also restrained all progressives Congress, APC, from recognizing him as such. In the judgment, Justice Danladi Mohammed ruled that Senator Abu is not entitled to seek re-election since he has been expelled by the party. Justice Danadi held that the embattled senator and APC are bound by the resolution of Mubi North local government executive of the party, dated 7th October 2022, which expelled the lawmaker. Thus, he is not entitled to enjoy any right or privilege, according to APC members. But Senator Abu has faulted the ruling, describing it as a cash and carry judgment. He told newsmen that the court is said to be the last hope of the common man but claimed that where it comes, where it becomes cash and carry affair, it cannot be described as such. According to him, it is a bought over judgment because those who purportedly expelled him from the party are not local government party executives and therefore have no jurisdiction to do so. He claimed that only the word executives of the party, according to the APC constitution, have the right to punish any erring member and not the local government or even the state executive. Senator Abu argued that the presiding judge had once issued a restraining order on the local government executives from parading themselves as such. The lawmaker said he would take the case to the Court of Appeal and also called on his supporters to disregard the ruling. Gunmen have killed four persons on Uzomi Wu Street in Eziani community, Ihala local government area of Anambra State. It was gathered that gunmen invaded the community on Tuesday and started shooting into the air, thereby killing the victims, three males and a female, who was said to be pregnant. The reason for the attack could not be ascertained, but a source in the area said the gunmen immediately fled the scene after killing the victims. Sources said the armed men shot indiscriminately as, as bullets hit the four persons. Confirming the attack in a press statement, the state police spokesman DSP Tochuku Ikenga said the bodies of the victims had been deposited at the mortuary. The Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, the advocate of Nigeria, has called for collaboration between states and the federal government in terms of prosecution and other means of combating insecurity. Malami made a call in his opening remarks at a conference of attorneys general in Nigeria on Tuesday in Abuja. He noted that the conference with a the theme enhancing synergy between the federal and state governments in the administration of justice in Nigeria underpinned one of the major anchors of Nigeria's democratic life. He said the structure and system of governance of the federation are not oblivious of the possibility of having genuine disputes and frictions among the federating units, national and sub-national governments. Malami noted that synergy will sustain the brotherliness, bring professional calling to bear on governance and reduce tension or frictions. He solicited the support of states to key into the implementation of the National Anti-Corruption Strategy, which has now proceeded into its second phase, spanning from 2022 to 2026. To African Stories Now, Rights Group Amnesty International has called on Ethiopian authorities to immediately and unconditionally release and drop charges against four human rights defenders detained for their work, documenting forced evictions. Daniel Tafaye, Bizwa Yehu Wendimu, Bereket Daniel and Nahom Hussein, who work for the Ethiopian Human Rights Council, were arrested on Thursday while investigating cases of forced evictions in the capital, Addis Ababa. Amnesty said they were accused of not having the necessary permission to carry out their work. The Ethiopian authorities have not commented on the matter. Amnesty said the Ethiopian police had told the EHRCO that they were not allowed to carry out rights investigations in the region and were only permitted to offer humanitarian assistance. To Rwanda now, Rwanda's government has walked back on President Paul Kagame's stand that the country will no longer offer refuge to people fleeing conflict in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. 
Mr. Kagame said refugees fleeing across the border into Rwanda were not Rwanda's problem. But in a statement on Tuesday night, government spokesperson Yolande Makolo said Rwanda had no intention to expel or ban refugees. She accused the media of misrepresenting President Kagame's remarks. And a foreign say now, Cardinal George Pell, whose conviction on child abuse charges shocked the Catholic Church before being quashed, has died at 81. The former Vatican treasurer is Australia's highest-ranking Catholic cleric and the most senior church figure ever jailed for such offences. Church officials said he died of heart complications after hip surgery. Cardinal Pell served as Archbishop of both Melbourne and Sydney before becoming one of the Pope's top aides. He was summoned to Rome in 2014 to clean up the Vatican's finances and was often described as a church's third-ranked official. But a cleric left his post in 2017, returning to Australia to face trial on child sex abuse charges. A jury in 2018 found he had abused two boys while, Archbishop of, while being Archbishop of Melbourne in the 1990s. Cardinal Pell, who always maintained his innocence, spent 13 months in prison before the High Court of Australia quashed a verdict in 2020. However, a civil lawsuit launched by the father of a choir boy that prosecutors alleged Cardinal Pell abused is still underway. Meanwhile, a landmark inquiry found that he knew of child sexual abuse by priests in Australia as early as the 1970s but failed to take action. The Child Abuse Royal Commission ran for several years, interviewing thousands of people, and its findings relating to Cardinal Pell were released after his acquittal. Cardinal Pell denied the allegation, insisting it was not supported by evidence. Brazil's judicial authorities have ordered the arrest of top public officials after rioters stormed key government buildings in Brasilia. Local media reports said one official, the former commander of the military police, has been arrested. Office of the Attorney General said the officials also include Brasilia's former public security chief, Anderson Torres, and others responsible for acts and omissions leading to the riots. Mr. Torres denies any role in the riots. Colonel Fabio Augusto, the police commander, was dismissed from his role after supporters of ex-president Jair Bolsonaro stormed Congress, the presidential palace, and the Supreme Court. The rioting came a week after President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva widely known as Lula, was sworn in. The dramatic scene saw thousands of protesters, some clad in yellow Brazil football shirts and waving flags, overrun police and ransack the heart of the Brazilian state. But that's our offering on this segment. We'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll bring you more. Stay with us. <laughs> 